I'm a DJ going to decentral, making NFT from Z Files, being crypto poor but J interesting stuff coming up in terms of nfts and play to earn gamings and that's why i'm so excited to introduce our next speaker from splinterlands representing splinterlands we have john monahan please welcome him to the stage hey what's up everybody make sure i can uh see my slides here all right, so I'm John Monahan. I'm with Splinterlands, VP of Sales, uh, here to talk about uh, a little bit of play and earn gaming today. Um, 10 minutes is not enough time to have you walk out of here knowing everything there is to know about Splinterlands. However, it is enough time to scratch the surface a little bit, and hopefully you're interested enough to come over and talk with us at our booth. We'll be here all day today and tomorrow. Quick disclaimer, uh, this is not meant to be financial and or legal advice. Do your own research. <clears throat> So what's Splinterlands, right? It's kind of the confluence of gaming and blockchain technology. What makes us, among many things, a little bit unique is that we've been around for four years already. Four years is a long time in this space. It also implies that we've been through a couple bear markets before. Uh, but we've been doing this for a long time. We've figured it out. We've learned a lot of lessons. And we're quite successful at this point. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the stats here in a minute. But <clears throat> the basic idea is that you are building a card collection, a lot like Magic the Gathering, uh, some of the other card collecting games you've had out there. The difference is the cards themselves are cards that you own on the blockchain. And so you're building out a card collection and you are battling against opponents, player versus player style, using a selection of your cards from your deck uh, to satisfy the rules and conditions for each particular battle. So a battle lasts about two to four minutes and you are given a randomly generated set of rules and conditions and a timer. And within that time limit, you have to pick a subset of your cards that you think are going to be successful, successful strategy to beat your opponent. And that's the basics of it. There's a, lot of, there's a lot more to it. I've heard it described as an easy game to learn, a very difficult game to master. And I can honestly say that I'm quite addicted myself. <laughs> uh, but. There's a lot of reach here, right? I mean, 2 million plus registered users, 900,000 plus unique active wallets, over 400,000 daily active users. That goes up and down, 350 to 500,000. Uh, but over 2 billion battles have taken place in Splinterlands over our four years. Um, 3 to 5 million transactions per day on chain, 146 countries, 10 plus languages, 1,000 plus guilds. You know, we do have some credibility behind us. And of course, we're number one on DAP radar, right? So this is among all decentralized applications, not just gaming. Uh, so you can kind of see the prevalence of, of gaming in this phase of Web3 that we're in. It's a really great, easy way to onboard from Web2 to Web3. Why is that? Because it's fun. So part of what we do that makes us successful, I, the, the game itself is, is, is a lot of fun, and, and the entertainment value has to be there. But the economy also has to be there as well. The earning is, it has to be good. So we have a pretty diverse ecosystem. Uh, so there's, there's a handful of tokens and a handful of NFTs that you're going to find in the system. Dark energy crystals are the in-game token, the deck, right? So you earn those by battling and, and, and doing a lot of the in-game transactions. Um, SPS, or Splinter Shards, that's our governance token. That's on Binance Smart Chain. And then we have vouchers that are airdropped for displaying specific behaviors in the game. For example, like staking SPS tokens. Uh, and then the NFTs are actually what are central to gameplay, right? So the cards, I talked about how we build the card collection, or you build the card collection of cards that you own. And uh, all of those cards are NFTs. And they all have these unique abilities and characteristics to them that you can use for gameplay. The packs that the cards come in, also NFTs, right? So when you buy a card pack, you have the choice to open it. And many people do. I can't help myself. I always open all mine. But the packs can be traded on the open market as well. So you can hold on to packs. And historically, they have appreciated in value quite a bit, as have the cards. Uh, validator node licenses. So we are moving more and more decentralized all the time. Uh, the validator nodes are for our SPS, our governance token. And we just went into a pre-sale Was it last week or the week before. Uh, for our uh, validator node licenses, sold out in 10 minutes. So we're into a public sale now. Those are available. And you can actually 
just by owning node licenses, I think we're announcing today that we're going to start the voucher airdrops for those who hold node licenses. There's also going to be SPS tokens that you'll get uh, airdrop to you for having node licenses as well. And then later this year, we'll actually launch the, the node software uh, so that you can start validating blocks. But um, these all produce interesting ways to earn and participate in the economy, the meta, the game behind the game in Splinterlands, right? And then we did do a land sale last year. Uh, those are also NFTs. And later this year, we're going to do a land expansion. So land expansion will begin to add functionality to the land that we've already sold. Land expansion will allow you to do things like mint items and spells. Items and spells will also be NFTs. And they will be NFTs that you can only get by minting them on your own land or buying them from other players who have minted on their land. That's not something that we actually sell. So how do you earn in Splinterlands? Well, there's a number of different ways, right? So just by playing the game, you're going to earn a lot. Uh, you heard right before I walked on stage, there are people in other countries that use this as their primary source of income. Of course, with the markets the way they are, this can fluctuate up and down in terms of, you know, the actual token prices. However, just by playing the game, no matter what, you're going to be earning. You can also earn through scholarship to guilds, and we'll talk about guilds in just a moment, uh, and the card market, right? So there's a number of different card markets. There's one in the game, and then our community has produced a number of card markets that surround the game as well. But you can buy uh, and sell cards to each other as players in any of these markets. You can also rent cards, so it produces a nice way to earn. But you can also earn by participating in the economy around the game. So whether you're stoking SPS tokens, uh, participating in liquidity pools, you're getting airdrops for different types of behaviors in the game, or operating nodes, uh, which is going to come out a little bit later this year, you know, just produces a number of different ways that you can actually earn and um, also see a lot of asset appreciation value as well. I mean, we're on our seventh edition of cards right now. And uh, if you look at the prices of cards that came out of what were $2 card packs once upon a time, I mean, you're seeing cards that are worth you know, tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars at this point. So the asset appreciation is really nice as well. Uh, but the big thing that, that we hinge everything on, the, where the, all the value comes from, is scarcity, the, sort of this combination of scarcity and utility. So the NFTs have to have utility. The entertainment value of the game has to be there. So the intrinsic value of playing the game has to be good, independent of what you're earning, how much you're earning, and those types of things. That's how we've been around for four years. That's how we've built a, a massive, strong community that we have of enthusiastic players that, that like to play the game. And um, making sure that the resources are scarce kind of keeps the, uh, the, the economy of the game going as well, right? So, uh, for example, we have 15 million card packs in the current Chaos Legion edition. We've sold about 8.5 million of those. Uh, so we sort of inflate the market with uh, the release of an edition of card packs. But as people buy the packs, they open up the packs. In order to level up the characters, you have to combine cards. You're starting to burn a lot of them from supply. Uh, so we, we kind of create that scarcity. And once we sell out of the packs, the only place to buy those is from other players. So we exist. One of our main goal, maybe our main goal, is to onboard as many people from Web 2 to Web 3 as we possibly can. And I think a lot of people here are very interested in doing that as well. Gaming is a fun way to make that happen, and it also reduces a lot of the friction. Uh, so just inherently, gaming will reduce a lot of the friction. However, we also try to do some little things in the game, and we have more, more coming in this vein. But when you sign up for an account, you have to buy a spell book for $10 to sort of unlock the features of the game. What you may or may not know when you buy that spell book for $10 is that you just created a wallet, and all of your gaming that, you take, that takes place going forward is now on-chain. Guilds are a really important part of what we do. Um, you know, it's really, you know, 400,000 daily active users is massive for Web3 right now, but it's a grain of sand on the beach compared to Web2 projects, right? And so one of the best ways that we can continue to bolster the economy around the game and bring uh, grow an enthusiastic community is to bring uh, groups in that are going to make larger, more centralized purchases. So gaming guilds will uh, play to earn gaming guilds at least, they will come into a game, they'll buy a lot of assets for a lot of money, and then they will delegate those assets out to scholars who are actual gamers that want to play the game, and then they revenue share on whatever the scholars make on those assets. 
So guilds are really important to us. That's actually a big part of what I do. Um, there's a lot of uh, NFT investors that want to consider creating gaming guilds. There's a lot of established gaming guilds out there. Uh, we have a number of them in the game already, uh, but always hoping that we find some more. The community is really strong. The community is why we are where we are. It's really important that we continue to grow that community, but you don't stick around for four years without a really strong community base. And we have been very blessed to have that. All right, trying to keep us on time here. We've done a number of different partnerships, but if you have questions, come to the booth. Uh, I'd love to talk with you. I'll be here for the, uh, you know, at the booth for today and tomorrow, but I know many of you are probably sticking around for consensus as well. I don't have a booth for consensus. I'd love to find some time to meet up and, and have individual conversations as well. There's my contact info, so thank you very much.